cube and link chains look great. It's a pity we can't cast one. Or can we? Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys, do you know there are folks out there that don't believe I cast the articulated dragon from solid bronze? I don't know why. If you can print it in situ, then you should be able to cast it in situ. Well, a few weeks ago, I saw this post by Bluecast, proving that it can be done. As my Instagram followers will know, I've already been experimenting with my own prints. This one, for instance, is just 7mm wide, and it prints great. However, as my goal has always been casting, 10mm seemed a more realistic width for me. It's an easy enough concept. It's simply a matter of designing each link so that they don't touch each other. Though, of course, they need to be close enough to create the effect. Printing was also easy as I designed each link to be support free. Other than the bottom, of course. But how was I going to go about casting? Well, a straight design like this would probably work, but it's not very efficient. A long chain would need a tall flask, and there'd be a lot of wasted investment there. Bluecast has already demonstrated the smart way. By arranging the links in a spiral, you can effectively print and cast a much longer chain. In fact, I don't mind admitting to you that I've been chatting with a London jeweller. His name is Two, and he's the guy behind Mare de Pearl. He's been very kindly helping me improve my casting techniques. Between us, I've no doubt we'll get that perfect spiral any day now. But as I haven't actually cast anything yet, I'm still looking for that proof of concept. So I decided on a chain that would fit inside a small flask. And of course, I wasn't lucky enough to have all my links meet perfectly. To cover the ugly join, I made a fake lock. To print correctly in place, I needed the supports to also act as sprues. To hold these where needed, I used a ring that would also act as a feeder. But in terms of sprues, these were still too small. So I added an upper ring and more sprue supports to help with metal flow. Of course, it's normal to add wax sprues but I opted to incorporate my sprues into the print design. Turning to lychee, I added plenty of 1mm tip supports. When it comes to the resin, there's a potential problem with this setup. As much of these links cannot actually be seen as they are overlapping each other, curing all faces is practically impossible. And that, of course, would be a problem if I used, for example, my usual resin, Soraya Tech Cast, which absolutely demands curing. For that reason, I opted to use Bluecast X1, which doesn't need any post-print curing. And talking of X1, Bluecast has very kindly offered to do a giveaway on my channel in a few weeks. I'll probably do an X1 user guide video, and at that time, I'll mention exactly how to enter. So do look out for that video. Opting to use my Anycubic D2, these are the settings that Bluecast kindly provided. X1 prints extremely well, as long as it has good supports. And these are certainly good supports. After a dip in ethanol, a blast of air turns the print white. It is worth mentioning that X1 takes wax very well, as I've demonstrated here. But on this occasion, I preferred the convenience and exactness that printing my supports gave me.
as this was a proof of concept, I opted to use bronze rather than a precious metal. Ah, that's not a very good proof of concept. The feed rings have formed and the links have started to fill in places, but it's still a complete failure. I returned to my design and beefed up the feeder rings, helping to keep the metal molten for longer. I also made the support sprues as thick as I could realistically make them. This time, acting on a suggestion from two, I increased both the metal and flask temperatures. And I also opted to use a perforated flask for good measure. Now that looks promising. I add a little laundry detergent and citric acid to ordinary water. This helps remove the majority of oxidization as well as the plaster. Cutting was very much brown trousers time. Now, I could try to file these knobs away with a manual file or even a Fordham, but Pepe Tools gave me this amazing mini sander, and to be honest, I don't think I'd want to do this any other way now. It was starting to look very nice, but would it work when I sliced away the remaining supports? Yes, every single link is free moving and independent of the one next to it. I'm good at being lazy, so I place the bracelet in a magnetic tumbler to help get into all the nooks and crannies. And that's it. The concept is proved. I'm delighted with the look of it, and I hope I've proved to those naysayers out there that you can cast articulated items if you design them properly. So that's it for this one, guys. Look out for that Bluecast X1 giveaway in a few weeks. Take care, and thanks for watching.